Hello folks. So, let's speak about the month of September. And as usual, if you prefer to read about it, I have also posted on my website so you can see what's there for more details. Yeah. So let's get into this. All right, what is happening in September? September will be an easier and calmer month than August. And it will give us a little bit of a prelude to what is coming in October and November when the eclipse season starts. Yeah. The first positive thing to note is that Venus has moved away from the gaze of Saturn and into Leo on August the 31st. This Venus transit will especially impact the fixed signs, including Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius. It can make you feel bold and confident now. Rather than the aspect of Saturn, Venus is receiving the aspect of Mars, of Rahu, and it will be conjunct the Sun. This can make us more sociable, being that it's in Leo. Um, it may also bring some excitement into relationships, uh, though I would say it's not necessarily a good time to make a relationship official because of the malefic, fiery aspects impacting Venus. This is especially true during the Venus com combustion, which is, which is like from mid-September till, till late November. But passions will run high, and this can also result in fights and arguments. Some separations and breaks may also result. And this, of course, has been an ongoing theme this year. Will continue. It will continue till November. And be also watchful of spending more than you can afford when Venus is combust. Yeah. So Venus remains in Leo until September the 25th. So now, just some thoughts on um, the Venus combustion, because it's quite a long one. Um, it's around, it's around 10 weeks. Um, now, I take Venus to be combust when it is 10 degrees or less from the sun. Yeah. So how this will manifest depends on which sign Venus is in and how close to the sun it is transiting. Yeah. Here in Leo, the sun is stronger, meaning um, the Venus significations get sacrificed for the sun significations. So there's more focus on like individualistic goals and less on making compromises in relationships. See what the sun rules in your chart to see what areas of life you will be giving priority toward. Of course, all results are not the same. The situation changes. The situation changes um, at the end of the month around the new moon. Yeah. So what else is happening in the month? Mercury remains strong in Virgo, where it entered on August the 20th. Then on September 10th, Mercury will turn retrograde in Virgo. And it will stay in Virgo till October 26th due to due to this retrograde cycle. So now is a good time for activities connected to Mercury. Uh, it could be set, scheduling appointment, it could be any studying pursuits, financial transactions, making connections. During its retrograde phase, it's still a strong Mercury, particularly if you want to connect with others and you want to finish some tasks. Um, it's also a good time to resume or pick up where you left off with goals and projects that you had put on hold. Um, it's a great time to reconnect with old friends. Uh, you may find people returning to your life, um, including it could be friends, it could be network connections, it could be work colleagues, it could be old romantic relationships. You may also um, restart a health routine that you had put on hold. 
and now would be a good time to do that. Um, the entire two months phase of Mercury and Virgo, it will it will only receive a benefit aspect from Jupiter. If you wanted to cultivate cultivate any good habits related to food and exercise, this is an excellent time to do that. Also great for any educational pursuits, learning a new language, a new skill, anything like that, a new subject. You can expect positive developments with money matters, with wealth building activities. Then on the same day as Mercury turns retrograde, we have the full moon in Aquarius in the nakshatra of Purvabhadra. This is a good full moon for connecting with others and for socializing. Especially people from the past may reappear because Mercury has just turned retrograde. So this energy is very, very potent. Um, the only aspect this full moon receives is one from Venus. Again, suggesting a good time to make connections or reconnecting, so both old and new. Controlling planet of Purvabhadra is Jupiter, which is situated second from it in Pisces. So again, this this again suggests relationships will feature now. Rahu, which is the ruler of Aquarius, is third from this moon. So it could also suggest some surprise connections that you make at this time. This is a good moon transit for the fixed signs, as well as for the air signs. So see where Aquarius falls in your chart to get a hint in what area of life you will be impacted. Yeah. So then, then what? Well, then we have the monthly sun transit. The sun will transit Virgo from September the 17th till October the 17th. This is another great transit for the sun as it only receives benefic aspects. First, it will join the exalted Mercury and get a boost from its friend, Jupiter's direct aspect. And then Venus will also join. There are no harsh aspects, but here Venus and Mercury will, 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 will be more, more so the dominating influence rather than the, rather than the sun. Right? And Venus is, of course, now combust. So rather than the individualistic and ambitious goals, now is the time to perhaps compromise in relationships and give give way to others. This is a positive transit for being open to relationships, being open to invites from friends, to meet, to connect. Um, September 25th, we see Venus join Mercury and Sun in Virgo in the early morning hours. Normally, this is not a good position for Venus because it tends to give Venus a kind of like a critical, uh, it gives Venus a critical and um, petty kind of quality like a nitpicking, right? We were talking about Virgo, the natural sixth house. But here Venus is joining an exalted Mercury, which will balance out this debilitated state. Balance out, but not cancel. It's still a debilitated Venus. But balancing out simply can mean, um, with Mercury there, so it could, it could simply mean that your speech becomes more refined rather than nitpicky and critical. Right, maybe maybe more calculated, and it can also mean when it comes to money, you can be more conservative. Right, not frugal, but conservative, thoughtful, calculating. Because Venus in Virgo can make you stingy. Yeah. On the same day, we have a new moon also in Virgo. Late into the day, the sun and moon join in Virgo in the nakshatra of Uttrafalguni. This is an auspicious new moon for any activities where you want long-lasting results. Now, new, normally this would be a great new moon cycle for making commitments in relationships, because we're talking about Uttrafalguni. But Venus being combust and Mercury being retrograde, be sure to get all the facts here. Maybe give it till after the eclipses before making firm, irreversible commitments. It is, however, an excellent time to start a new routine, uh, a new endeavor, and even a new chapter in life. Right? Jupiter is aspecting this new moon. This new moon is also with two benefics, right? Both in both in Uthrafal at this time, both Mercury and Venus are in Uthrafalini. But again, retrograde Mercury so close to Venus suggests 
a reconnection of sorts. Going back to something like, it could be old relationships, old friendships. It's especially a good moon cycle, a new moon cycle for all the earth signs. Or if you have a lot of planets in earth signs, you can see the benefits now. Sun is the controlling planet of Uthrophogony, which is where the new moon takes place. So suggesting a great time for fitness and health and even self-care activities. Um, so it's also good for financial matters, especially if you have your own business. If you have your own business, you can see some positive growth now. Um, now, finally, I want to um, I want to make another couple of points about this month. Yeah. From September 3rd till September 9th, Mars is in Rohini, Virgotham. So Mars is not only in Rohini in D1, but it's also in Rohini in the D9. So this approximately one week period, be cautious with your speech, uh, with what you say, with what you eat, with any dealings with your, with your family members. Also, also check and double check details with money matters at this time around this from the September 3rd till, till the 9th. Starting on September 10th, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, the other thing I wanted to say was starting on September 10th and culminating on September 25th, we have Pitru Baksh, a time for special rituals to honor our ancestors. These rituals um, also mark a time where we can not only honor but create some distance between ourselves and our ancestors. Yeah. The favorable full moon on September 10th, as well as the new moon on September 25th, are an excellent time to reflect on your connection to your ancestors. It could also be unresolved issues with your parents, with your grandparents, Anyone who went before you in your family line, especially if those people have passed away. Yeah. This way you can encourage the healing process. And with so much energy in Virgo, um, toward the middle, from the middle to the end month, the end of the month, is, it's an excellent time for that. Overall, this month is, um, it's very good for relationships, it's good for socializing, it's also good for money matters. And it will feel lighter than the last few months so so that's all for now folks um all the best cheers